um, tell you stories about myself and some things about the experience that I have and uh, maybe give you something that you can take home with you as uh, not like my, the name of my speech, Puerto Rican, as I, I am actually from the Dominican Republic. <laughs> and um, I came to this country, I came to New York at the age of 19. And I came with all my dreams, I came with uh, my knowledge, my education, and I wanna be a businessman. I wanna make big sales and make a lot of money. It was only one problem, I didn't know the language. So, <laughs> Um, oh my God, I can remember uh, my first job interview. I was sitting on the interview, it was this Puerto Rican guy next to me. And uh, I was so scared, I was nervous, and he noticed it, and he told me something that I will never forget. He told me, don't worry, just do what I do and say what I say. <laughs> I, said, <laughs> I said, okay. <laughs> So I sit next to him to the interview, you know, every time he said yes, I say yes. Sometimes I say see, sí, but they understood was yes, and uh, every time he say mm -hmm, I say mm -hmm. So I basically mimic everything he said. But the manager, he noticed it. I didn't understand what he was talking about. I didn't, I didn't comprehend what he was talking about, but he saw something. He saw uh, my attitude, he saw my faith, he saw he sit, I, I was sitting right in front of him, and he knew I wasn't gonna get up and leave that room without that job. And I think that's what made him give me the opportunity to work on that company. And that's how I became a forklift driver. Uh, I worked there from 10 in the morning, from 10 in the, in the night, until 8 in the morning. And then from 9 in the morning to 12 in the afternoon, I went to school to learn English. And it was a horrible time. I, uh, I barely have any time to, to eat. I barely have any time to have a life. And I know I, I, I came to this country not to live like that. So I was always looking for, for a, better, a better place to work, a better, a better way. And then I was, one day I was walking uh, through the streets of New York and I saw this big sign that says, now hiding. And uh, I went inside, was this guy, all white, he told me all about this great organization. You know, they train you. They, uh, it's a beautiful government organization. They, uh, they give you food. They give you shelter. And they even give you money every month. And I said, oh my God, what do I sign up? He said, right here. The dark one. And that's how I enjoyed the Navy. Uh -huh. <laughs> I went to boot camp. I still don't know the language. I struggled both by my life. As soon as I stepped out of the bus, he started screaming at me. I looked to my left. Guess who's there? It's the Puerto Rican guy. <laughs> so I sat next to him from Vulcan. I folded the clothes, everything he did, everything he said, everything I did, everything, the same like he did it. You know, it took me longer than what was expected. It's supposed to be three months. I spent five months over there. <laughs> I think I got a record. But I went through it. And uh, then I was transferred uh, to the John F. Kennedy right here in Maple. And uh, I, I step out of the box and I look up and I'm looking for the ship. And what is the ship? It was so immense that the chief was a huge building that was in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> I was scared going up the stairs, because you gotta go upstairs to get to the big aircraft carrier. And when I go to salute to go in, guess who was there? <laughs> <laughs> it was the foreign I said, oh my God, I must be the luckiest guy in the world. <laughs> and, and the great thing was that it wasn't only him. He got like 20 Puerto Rican friends. And they teach me how to advance in, in, in rank, uh, advance faster in rank. They, taught, uh, they told me how to get the recognition from my superiors. I spent five wonderful years in the Kennedy. Then I was transferred to Kings Bay, Georgia, the submarine base. Over there, I spent two more years. And uh, then I decide, well, now that I know English, I can go ahead and pursue my dreams. <laughs> so that's how I become, became a realtor. I got out, and when, once I got out and uh, 
uh, I went to the office and uh, and I go to see my broker. The broker is the person that, that tell you what assignments are. I open the door and I look and get who was there. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God! The Puerto Rican guy again. <laughs> well, uh, at this point, you know, I, I, I must. I mean, you probably want to know what the name of a Puerto Rican guy. You no. Know? Well, I must admit, the Puerto Rican guy doesn't even have a name. He might not even be Puerto Rican. <laughs> because the Puerto Rican guy is each one of you. Because everywhere I go. Everywhere I go, I look for that Puerto Rican guy that's gonna make me better, that's gonna mm -hmm. teach me how to grow and be better as a speaker, and that's what I'm here. I'm looking for that Puerto Rican guy. <laughs> 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 Thank you very much, William, and you will be evaluated in writing again by Sam Perkins. Best of luck, Sam. Thank you.